All right, so then we're ready to send this, this cabin model to layout and start compiling our drawings. So let's do just that. We'll click on File and choose Send to Layout. And that launches our Layout 3. And now we have some templates here. So um, these are some of my own templates I've created. I'm going to use uh, this. Uh, we're going to use our Z style. This is, I, I've since renamed it in the book as the linear style. So uh, we'll use this 11 by 17 template. And uh, included in the book is in the SketchUp workflow for architecture is uh, a complete description of layout. So the tool set from front to back, also all of the settings dialogues, the inspectors, everything that you need to know about layout is included in this book. And then some advanced uh, topics are how to create a title block and how to create your own scrapbooks. And we'll look at scrapbooks later, but if you just set up your own title block like this, just as powerful as CAD when it comes to implementing standards. All right, so now our default tray here, I'm going to set that to not hide for now. All right, so this is layout, and we have a viewport set up here. So we're going to call this our, our first page. Uh, we can, you, you can set up your, your viewports uh, a couple different ways. I guess the, the most visual way to do it is to select the viewport, and then you assign your scenes. So we have perspective one, and then I can set that to be a little bit smaller, like this. And then I'll hold down control, that's option on the Mac. And let's squeeze these down just a bit. And nudge that over. If I hold down shift and tap my arrow keys, I can nudge it. And we get perspective two. And take note, I have my, my uh, layout set to auto render. And uh, this is this is important because for this demonstration, I don't want to have to keep on hitting render and and let you see that. But um, as a model progresses, it's definitely best to turn that off. And so a lot of those best practices definitely covered in the book there. So uh, for this presentation, we'll leave that on, and and that'll give you a good idea of how long it actually takes to render these things too. So uh, if you can imagine, I would call this like my cover page. So give that a C. And then let's add another page. So we've got page one is going to be our cover. And then I like to just duplicate a page. That way, I'm, I'm on page two, and we're going to call this one our elevations. And I already have a viewport. I don't have to go and reinsert anything. So now I can take this, and we can set up our elevation. So again, I just go to elevation front. And then I'll just stretch these out. And we want to pick a scale. And we're going to set this. Let's try quarter inch. So actually, quarter inch looks like it's pretty right on. So uh, I'll scoot this to the top of my page, hold down Control or Option on the Mac, and we'll set up our side elevation as well. So those are both at quarter inch. All right. And we're, we're not going to do any of the uh, extra annotating right now. I, I want to show you that in a, a later video so that you can see how uh, making revisions to a model, how that really works. Okay, so now you can see we have uh, page one. We have our um, a very rough design, but uh, you can imagine how as this progresses, these images are going to really uh, sharpen up. And certainly we can change the style as we do add more detail. Also, uh, we have our elevations set to a scale. Now here's the thing about these elevations. If I zoom way in, see how pixelated that line work is. Well, this is rendering as a roster. I definitely recommend rendering these as a hybrid. That, that assigns vector lines with your roster shadows. So we're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to assign this to be a hybrid rendering. So uh, even though hybrid renderings do take, they do take a significant amount of time longer, but it's definitely worth it because you get this crisp line weight. And I got to say, for, uh, even the, the largest office remodel project that I worked on with this system, no big deal. I've, I've never had a major problem with rendering elevations um, as, as hybrids or uh, rendering with vector line work. So uh, I'm going to save this. It's always a good practice just to save things right off the bat. And we're going to call this our cabin. And I'll just overwrite that. That's fine. All right, so now we'll go back to our pages here and let's duplicate. And now we're getting to our plan. All right, so now we can trash one of these. And let's see, most likely we're going to want our plan. The first one is probably going to render as a vector. So we can just set that up right now. And I'll stretch out my viewport. And let's assign this uh, plan 
heavy. All right, so now I can adjust my, my viewport around here. Like that. All right, so now you've got, we've got our front door and we've got uh, kitchen, bathroom. So uh, I'd say that quarter inch is, is just fine for what we're doing here. And if I zoom in on this, check out how the line weights work. So line weights are a product. I'm going to select this viewport so we can see its properties over here. Uh, line weights are a product of the style applied in SketchUp. And then it's got a multiplier uh, with the, the section planes and the profiles and all those different properties in the style. And then we set up a line weight for the viewport and the layout. So I'm going to assign a 0.6 line weight. That's going to thicken it up just a bit. So this way, my thinnest line is 0.6, and then a section plane, I, if I remember right, this is set to 3. So it's going to be 3 times that. They're going to be pretty drastic. So as you get, get more comfortable with the system, you can certainly adjust that. But I think it looks good when there's a nice punch to the, uh, uh, to the, the plan cut. All right, so there's our, our heavy viewport. And we can just go to Edit and choose Duplicate. That copies that viewport down an inch and to the right an inch. And let's choose our light line weight. So there's our light line weight. But now, just because we called it light doesn't make it light. Uh, we actually got to go over here and assign a 0.25 line weight. And then I'm going to use my Shift nudge. So I hold down Shift and use my arrow and go 1, 2, oh, I got to be in my uh, layout space, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that puts it right back in place. All right, so now you can see the array of line weights here. We've got our, our thick walls, we've got our thin windows, and you can even kind of see how this, this section cut is a little bit thicker. So that is how we control line weights in layout, uh, or in SketchUp and layout. So you could have as many, you can have as many of these levels as you need, or as many viewports if you want to have heavy, medium, light, you could certainly do that. But in my experience, I've achieved a very wide array of line weights by just using two. And it keeps things a lot simpler. All right, so uh, the thing about our light line weight is that this needs to render as a hybrid. And I'll show you the reason for that is that I need for my windows to have a background colored in. So that's actually like a... Uh, a roster image background applied to those. So I'm going to undo that so it goes right back into place and I'll show you why that needs to be uh, there because when we put our hatch in, so I'll go to edit and choose uh, duplicate and we're going to go to our hatch and we need to render this as a roster and then I need to go to arrange and choose send to back and then I'm going to use my nudge one, two, three, four one, two, three, four. All right. So now there is our hatch. And sometimes you'll see these little knobs going out there. But the thing about that is that it's actually um, product. You know, this should actually always be set to low. And this should always be set to high. So uh, when it renders low, at times it, it can look um, kind of grainy. So uh, if we were to set this to high, which I'm not going to do, it takes a little bit longer to render every time, it would definitely clean that up a bit. So um, there's our final, uh, our final plan. Now let me tell you just a, a little bit about uh, layers in layout. So in layout, I've, I've kind of tinkered with the idea of guides, but we're not going to use that right now. We'll just delete those entities. Typically, I have annotations, viewports, and title block. So all of anything, any viewport or any inserted content goes on the viewport layer. So I'm going to move that to our current layer. All this stuff, almost all of this stuff goes on the title block layer because it repeats on every page. And that's where you get our uh, shared layer, which that should be there. We're, we're not going to mess with that right now. That's a, a product of my, my template. So uh, and then anything that is, is different is definitely going to go on um, the annotation layer. So what that means is that as we go through here, we can uh, set our, our viewports to um, our viewport layer. And let's do that here. And then I can lock these two layers. So viewports and title block are almost always locked. That way I can't go in here 
and delete anything. So as I'm going through and working on these drawings, it's impossible for me to nudge them or mess them up. So the big idea is that you set everything up in SketchUp, and once you create your presentation and layout, you lock it, and then you, you're pretty much good to go. So um, all right, then uh, in the next video, I think we'll we'll take a look at revising our design and take a look at um, and and realize how dynamic this link is, how your your exterior walls have a hatch attached to them. If I move something in, in SketchUp and uh, I design in 3D there, my, my construction documents are a product of that 3D model.